What's the word, y'all? Welcome back to the Call Game Recap. Today was a very busy day in the NBA world, man. We had 25-point comebacks, game winners, overtime games. A lot of things went on today. It was busy. I was also busy. Believe it or not, there are some times where I have to allocate my time in other places other than basketball. Typically, I come into this room at 6 o'clock and watch basketball until midnight. Today was not one of those days. I had to do some other things that you will see eventually because it's related to some of the things we do around here. But I'm telling you that because there are a lot of games on today's slate that didn't get a lot of attention from me. I might have tuned in for the last two to three minutes or not have tuned in at all. So some games will not be talked about, but y'all know long season. I will eventually talk about your favorite team if that's what you're worried about. Before we get into today's show, I was on Duncan Robinson's podcast, which is a big moment for me because typically when I talk to NBA players, I am the host. But this time I just talk, I just hopped in the Zoom call. They were asking me questions. I was being interviewed by Duncan Robinson, NBA player so shout out to him and davis for inviting me the long shot pod that'll be out on thursday so please show that some love um just let them know kenny sent you and i think it'll go a long way if y'all show some love all right leave a like subscribe if you're new let's get into today's slate of games everybody in the world has their own personal pet peeves right for example my girlfriend's pet peeve is when our dogs lick themselves you know dogs do that all the time they lick themselves for clean to clean themselves is clint the word to clean themselves um and she hates the sound of it right my personal pet peeve is when people go onto Twitter to tell me what to talk about on this show. It bothers me way more than it should because I think most people out there that watch these videos understand that I am everywhere when it comes to the NBA world. I typically get to see a lot of the stuff and I bring it to attention, right? And, and sometimes it can be helpful, right? Like I said, I didn't watch every single game today. So I didn't watch uh, Philly versus Houston. So my, I think it was my guy Ninja Bands. He was like, you got to talk about Matisse Stiebel's defense. I didn't watch the game. I know Matisse Stiebel's defense is great, but I know when I go watch this game tomorrow morning, I'll pay a closer attention to Matisse Stiebel's defense so I really get a full grasp of what he saw, right? But the things that bother me is when people come into my mentions and say, man, you better talk about Damian Lillard tonight. When has somebody had a legendary performance and I put together a show and I didn't talk about it? It doesn't happen. So please, please refrain from, from doing stuff like that. I told like it really bothers me more than it should. OK, let's talk about Damian Lillard, though. Um, Yesterday, this is how you know this bothers me, because yesterday after he had his big time shot, he had another game winner type shot. Uh, somebody said, Kenny, you got to talk about Damian Lillard MVP candidacy. I told him, no, I will not talk about Damian Lillard's MVP candidacy. Not that he didn't deserve to be in the conversation because he definitely does. It's because that one fan told me I should talk about it. I told him no. But that one fan that was yesterday, we'll talk about Damian Lillard's MVP candidacy. As of right now, uh, the top three guys in no particular order is Damian Lillard, Joel Embiid, and LeBron James in my own personal book. And if you watch my podcast, you know that we do every single season, we do like, who do we think is going to win MVP? Rookie of the year, yada, yada. Damian Lillard was my, my MVP pick preseason. And a lot of it had to do with the team being more complete around him. Damian Lillard has done a lot of things with a lesser cast, right? They've been able to make the playoffs. He's made big-time moments. His stats is always incredible, but they always find themselves – like on the bottom of the conference, or or they did have that uh, conference finals run, but they always find themselves in the middle of the pack is probably where I want to explain it. But this year, I think that adding Robert Covington, the way Gary Trent played in the bubble, and Yusuf Nurkic being completely healthy, I was like, yeah, this can be a, a year where they end up top three in the Western Conference, and if Damian Lillard still puts up the same type of numbers, have the same type of moments, I think he can win MVP. And well, things haven't gone completely like that because they're still dealing with a lot of injuries, but the thing I love the most is it doesn't matter. And Damian Lillard's postgame interview he mentioned two things that were super interesting to me he said that the portland trailblazers landed in new orleans three hours before tip-off went right to the arena and got a win that is crazy and the second thing um the second thing that really brought to my attention was like he was saying yes we have a lot of injuries and things but we don't care we still believe every single night we are the better team even though we're missing so many guys and this is an amazing mindset to have man me and my guys are watching uh watching the game together and pierre asked a question it was 26 seconds ago the trailblazers were in a timeout and he was like is damian lillard's shot going in because everybody in the world knew the ball was going to damian lillard's hands he's on a hot streak he already hit like three game winners in the last week or so so we knew it was going to be in his hands and me being a nerd a stats nerd trying to play the law of averages, I was like, no, he's already hit too many. This one's bound to miss. It's just the way it's going to work. Nope, it's Damian Lillard. So never bet against Damian Lillard is what I'm saying. That king of the fourth quarter thing I gave myself when I was 12 years old, I'm giving it to Damian Lillard because he can be 0 for 33 in the first three quarters. Expect him to take over in the fourth quarter and potentially win that game, man. MVP candidacy is looking real good. I think I think a lot of it, um, what can help his case a lot is the team getting better. 
getting even better than what they are right now. Right now, they're closing out games, even with all the injuries. Once they get back healthy, them winning way more games would definitely increase his chances because, like, the other two guys I mentioned are towards the top of their conferences with LeBron and Joel Embiid. And at the end of the day, whether you like it or not, when it comes to the voting, those are the type of things people care about, right? You you need to be a, a winning team to the highest tier except for, like, the Russell Westbrook year. But those are crazy circumstances, right? Um, Overall, no, they, even though Damian Lillard did take over like he typically did, uh, does, it was a great team win. Um, Robert Covington's def- defense was very versatile today. Being able to guard Zion Williams for some possessions, then guard Brandon Ingram other possessions was was very well um, well needed today. So a big win from them. I hated that last possession for the Pelicans. Um, just really, really bad. Just a bad, bad last possession. We'll leave it at that. Damian Lillard, continue to do your thing, bro. Um, he called game. You know what I'm saying? He called game. The next game, of course, I got to watch is a Bulls game. Can't miss those. Haven't missed those in years. No matter what is going on in my life, expect me to watch the Bulls. And today was a very satisfying win to me. Uh, the Bulls have this thing where where they come out in a lot of games very, very dry. They've done it for a few years now. And I was hoping it would be remedied with us having a new coach, but maybe it's the personnel, right? And then they got down by 25 to the Detroit Pistons. Now, every time the Bulls play and they do something good, I kind of have a hard time trying to figure out how much time I should spend on it. Because I know that the Bulls have a big fan base, but I know I could talk about about my Bulls for hours. So I don't really know. I'm going to, I'll give it a couple minutes. Um, so they go down, down by 25 against the Detroit Pistons. And, and though the Detroit Pistons at this point is our eight and 20, they are way better than what their record says, right? They've got wins against the Lakers, the Celtics, the 76ers. They got quality, quality wins. And they basically begin better every single week in the NBA season for sure. So I knew the Bulls being the Bulls, this is not going to be an easy game like you would expect it to be based off record. Jeremy Grant is absolutely incredible. Let's let's focus on them for a second. Jeremy Grant is absolutely incredible. I think, personally, the Bulls defended him very, very well tonight, and he ended with 43. Did you hear me? The Bulls defended him very, very well tonight, and he ended with 43. So please, if you did not watch this game or just watch the Jeremy Grant highlights from this game, hella difficult shots. So many difficult shots. So shout out to Jeremy Grant. He was trying to put his team on his back because nobody else was really showing up. Uh, they had player of the week. Sadiq Bay had a couple of decent moments. But other than that, it was just them. And then Josh Jackson wanted to be the tough guy. And you know what? I was rooting for you, Josh Jackson. But the moment you try to be tough against my Bulls is when they get cut off. Uh, but the Bulls with a big, big comeback. Man, very satisfying win. Uh, Zach Levine is a all-star lock. I don't want to see a single comment that disagrees. He is an all-star lock, and if you don't agree with that, you aren't watching the Bulls. The Bulls were down by 25, and, and this man just decided he was going to take over the third quarter and bring us within single digits and then do it again in the fourth quarter to bring us the lead. Shout out to my guy Patrick Williams, man. He had three points going into the fourth that then turned into Kawhi Leonard in the fourth quarter. I love I loved a lot of things I saw today. And even Kobe White, right? Kobe White was bad for a majority of this game. He hit a very, very clutch three-pointer later. I love Billy Donovan as a coach because when the team is down by 25, he felt okay with benching the guys that were playing bad. Like I said, Patrick Williams had three, three points through the first three quarters. Kobe wasn't hitting his shots. So he went with Thaddeus Young. He went with Garrett Temple. He went with the Vets. And the Vets plus Zach Levine, that's defense plus offense, amazing run. But then again, he trusted them enough to put them in the game when it mattered the most, and both of them performed well. A brilliant coaching job from Billy Donovan. That's all I really want to say. All right, we'll move on to the ne- <laughs> move on to the next game. Again, I can talk about the Bulls all day. Whether it's good or bad, I could do it. But I'm happy today because we caught a win. Uh, the next end, I caught the end of the game between the Washington Wizards and the Denver Nuggets. This is definitely a game I gotta go back and rewatch because um, when I checked the box score, um, uh, Davis Bertans. 9 of nine of 11. Now, we knew a game like this was going to come eventually. He's too good of a shooter to continue to be in the slump. And this was a big time one. And guess what? The Wiz, three-game win streak. A guy, if you don't know, there's a guy who bet $10,000 today or yesterday. He bet $10,000 that the Washington Wizards will come back and win the championship. And I forget, it's an extreme amount of payoff. I think it's like one point something million or even something like five million. I don't know. But if they do win a championship, that man is a, a genius. 99.9% chance he's not a genius and he's actually an idiot because he just wasted ten thousand dollars. But what what a great game. The moments that I did see as Russell Westbrook was very wild, and I was like, bro, y'all need this win, y'all need this win. Slow it down, slow it down. But um the Garrison Matthews making plays. I don't want to parallel it to to Alice Caruso because 
it feels weird because they're both like white NBA players, but but he was making a lot of Alex Caruso type plays, just like hustle plays, things like that, and those are the type of things that can keep you on the basketball court at the end of the day. And then the Denver Nuggets, man, ah, oh, what a what a disappointing start. But I'm still giving them a pass until they get completely healthy. It did help that Gary Harris was here. I mean, to see him on the court, he didn't play well today. Um. I, I don't know. I don't know. Very, very, very weird to see the Denver Nuggets continue to do like this this slide. And right now they're 15 and 13, man. A lot of teams this season are with their injuries and with the health and safety protocol, it's hard to really gauge how good or how bad they really are, right? Um, but there are other teams where they've made it pretty, pretty easy. The Miami Heat, man, today was a weird one. I did not watch the first three and a half quarters of this game. Actually, I was going to record this call game episode while that game was going on because I was like, I didn't watch the first three quarters. I don't know what's really going on. But when I tuned in, oh, I saw everything I needed to see. Captain Kim Bazemore, the Bays guy, decided to take off, which is fun because I remember when Kim Bazemore was like a rookie sophomore at Old Dominion and he was the one on the bench doing the dances. You know, he was a bench mob guy. He didn't play but he was fun. When something happened, they'd pan over to see what Kim Bazemore was doing, and now he's making clutch and big, big plays, man. The Heat could not do anything on the glass. They weren't doing a good job defending. And this man, Steph Curry, didn't do a single thing for the first three quarters because that's when I checked the box score. He was like, what, two for 19 from three? Yeah, that's what it felt like. And then in the, late in the fourth quarter in overtime, he had some big old shots. The Heat are wild, bro. It's so crazy how far they've – how how – much worse they look this season versus last and you know what I'm not blaming this one thing particularly but it's the one thing I keep thinking about when I watch the Miami Heat they could really use a Jay Crowder they could really use a Jay Crowder instead of the 10 mil that they gave Myers Leonard you know what I'm saying Jay Crowder here's a cool stat about Jay Crowder in the last seven years Jay Crowder's played for four different NBA teams and oh I guess five now when you when you count the um the Suns every one of those teams have made the playoffs he just has that thing. Now he's not he's not the guy. You know what I'm saying? But he's a glue guy, great defender. He's been able to hit his shots consistently over the last couple of years, and he was a part of this finals run last year. Letting him go, I, I don't know if they let him go or he walked, yada yada yada. But he's the he's a winning type player, especially to help you get to the postseason. And they need that type of thing. Kelly Olynyk, ah, I don't like to see him on the court. In moderation, he can be good. But starting and playing big minutes, no, not so much, man. It's it's rough. It's real rough. Shout out to the Warriors, man. No Draymond Green. No no center whatsoever. They got Juan Toscano Anderson with a C by his name, meaning he was a center tonight. And they won a basketball game. Um, um, team rebounding, team defense, and in the game where Steph Curry shot 5 for 20 from 3, also no Draymond, also no Klay Thompson, they caught a win. Wiggins, big time shot. Kelly Oubre continue to look better. Hey, man, it's a big win. It's a big win. In a terrible, it's a big win for them in a terrible loss of Miami Heat. All the other games on the on the book, uh, like some of these games I do want to watch, like the Atlanta Hawks getting a win over the Celtics. I know that the Celtics are missing Marcus Smart. They're missing Kemba Walker. But I do want to see the 40-point uh, performance from Trey Young. Um, did, somebody told me that this 76ers versus Rockets game wasn't as close as the final score says, but I still want to go back to watch that. Oh, I'm glad I look back here. I did watch the fourth quarter of Timberwolves versus Pacers, and I was so upset when that shot, a fourth quarter in overtime, I was so upset, upset when that shot by uh, uh, Anthony Edwards didn't go in because I was I was ready to tweet Anthony Edwards' call game. The ball was in. And you know how many shots we've seen this season for game winners that were in the basket but rolled out? It was another one. It was another. Carlton Towns looked amazing. But at the end of the day, Malcolm Brogdon just got that clutch G, man. Sabonis has another all-star performance after basically not being as good over the past couple weeks. The stat line looks ridiculous. 36, 17, and 10 with three steals. That's an amazing stat line. But it was the big shots from Malcolm Brogdon late in that game and in overtime to put them over the hump. But I, I think that this Timberwolves fans, and this is it's for the few of y'all out there, I think you're happy with some of the things that's going on. Yes, you have only seen your best players play together five times in a year, but like Carl Anthony Towns coming back and having a 30. Um, Anthony Edwards didn't shoot the ball well, but he he looked good again, if that makes sense, right? Even the shot going in and out. Um, Malik Beasley going to the bench so they could try to get more defensive versatility. Looked solid. He had 30 off the bench. And Nas Reed looked good. Like, there are some things that you can take away from what the Minnesota Timberwolves have right now that you can be positive about at the end of the day. I, like, like that. that's what I can say. That's what I can say. All right, that's all I got. Call game.